Hey guys, welcome back to Clownfish TV. This is Neon. I am here with Geeky Sparkles. Hello. And we're going to do an update on the Marvels, aka Captain Marvel 2. Mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> apparently, apparently there is word that it is not testing well, and that is the reason behind it being pushed back until November. Well, I believe that more than just tech, like, you know, post production delays, because this was supposed to be out last summer. Yeah, it's been pushed back, what, four or five times this now? This is the fifth date it's had. Yeah, so there have been rumors before. I know like seven or eight months ago, they talked about it not testing well. They went back for reshoots and then people were speculating it was a, a, a visual effects problem because of, uh, you know, Disney having so many problems with their VFX people, not paying them well. And we saw what happened with Ant-Man 3 and MODOK and that's that's become a laughing stock. But uh, no, according to Grace Randolph, it's much, much worse than we could have imagined and Disney is bracing themselves for another dud. Uh, well, we can imagine quite a bit because we said <laughs> that we thought they were moving it there because it was putting it between two other, you know, big movies and they could be like, oh, oh, it failed because, um, you know, it was going up against Dune 2. Yeah, so that's what they'll do. They'll they'll blame the other movies and, you know, or uh, they'll just keep pushing it back until they're like, you know what, we'll just dump it on Disney Plus and call it a day. At this point, if it's not testing well, it's probably what they should do, but they don't want to do that because they made such a big deal about Captain Marvel. They'll break it up into like four episodes and be like, look, it's a new series called The Marvels on Disney Plus. Anyway, let's uh, let's talk about this. Before we get into it any further, please subscribe for more pop culture news, views, and rants, guys. Uh, over 296,000 subs, almost 300,000 subs. Please hit the subscribe button. You know you want to. You know you want to. Touch our buttons. All right, so let's go out to Cosmic Book News, which has a roundup of it. Actually, this came from uh, Grace Randolph originally, who said that uh, she thinks behind closed doors, Disney is freaking out over the failure of Ant-Man 3. Yes! Yeah. You think? Oh my God! Everybody's saying this. Wow! What a what a what an insightful thing to say. I, I keep seeing these different things like, oh, you know, exclusive scoop, and it's like, really? Yeah. You know? It's like well, everybody thinks this. She it. has apparently been hearing that the Marvels is not testing well. And we heard this before. Yeah, it was like seven or eight months ago. But apparently they did reshoots, and now the reshot version also did not test well. So now Imagine it's getting pushed that. pushed back again. And uh, look, everybody is making fun of how bad the the effects were in Ant Man three. On top of all the other you know story reasons, whatever, the movie had a massive drop up. I mean, almost seventy percent decline in week two. That's that's pretty much unprecedented for a Marvel movie. It happened with Eternals. A lot of people were like, "Well, with Eternals, these are new characters. Nobody knows. Nobody cares." Well, but it's funny to me though. Disney's freaking out over the way Ant Man performed. And water's wet. I mean, what studio wouldn't freak out over this? Well, I think it's I think it's the same with Star Wars. Like they honestly thought that they could keep churning out subpar product forever and people were going to go see it just because the brand and now it's like, "No, no, no. You actually have to make good movies. You have to make good TV shows." And they're like, "Well, Captain Marvel did so well." Yes, because people thought they had to watch it and you kind of had it set up they had to watch it before going into Endgame. Yeah, because at the, the end of Infinity War, they had, you know, Nick Fury uh, page her, you know, call her on the cell phone. Mm -hmm. with the, and so people are probably thinking, oh, this is going to lead directly into Endgame. And she was barely in the movie. She was in the movie. She was she was like a side character in the, her own movie. She got flicked away by Thanos. And and, yeah. and I think I don't think that's how it started out. I think that's how it ended up. Yeah. And you know now we have Ms. Marvel being added. And Ms. Marvel did not do well on Disney Plus. I would argue that the only one that seemed to have had you know some positivity behind it was uh, Monica Rambeau because people liked her from One Division. Yeah, you she know. was she was pretty good. And uh, hey, I, I stand by it. She should have been Captain Marvel. Right. Should have been Captain Marvel. And Ms. Marvel, I think the actress is sweet and as I'll get out. And I think that, you know, I don't I didn't watch the show, so I can't say if it was bad or not. But what I heard was some people said it was really cute, but a lot of people said it was it didn't feel like a Marvel show. Yeah. Um and I know people were mad they changed her powers and stuff. So I don't know, guys. I mean, I'm to the place I don't know what else to add to it because we've been talking about it. This is like, you know shit, Sherlock. I mean, this is the, the unsurprised. The, the problem, <laughs> the problem with Disney is they wait until it's too late to course correct. They always do this. They're they're like, well, this might just be a one-off. Let's let's uh you know put another movie out there and say, oh no, that one didn't do well either. Let's try one more time. 
One more time. It's just because people didn't like these characters or whatever. We released it during macroeconomic headwinds and COVID and crap. Oh, that one didn't do well either. No, hmm. they're going to say it's misogyny and racism and all this shit. And this is because people, one, are tired of the MCU and they're burned out and they're not coming to theaters anymore. Then you could give them things like, you know, what we saw Ant-Man and the Wasp, but we didn't see it. But like, we, you're seeing this trend. Each of these movies is like underperforming. Guardians of the Galaxy 3 might do well. I think Guardians 3 is going to do well. Because people have been waiting I for do. that one for a long time. But for um, the most part, you just keep putting stuff out there. People just don't give two shits about. Uh, yeah. I mean, this isn't exactly Spider-Man. This isn't like, like these are, we're, we're scraping the bottom of the barrel of Marvel Comics characters at this point. I'm just point, like, you know? you know, can you just like give it a break for a while maybe? <laughs> I don't know what to tell No, you. they can't because IP. And then, you know, but this all, but then too, they're getting their, they're biting them in the ass about the way they've treated the FF, VF, VFX houses and the fact that they, they're like not letting them finish the work. And I guess the biggest problem they're having is they keep changing things at the last minute that does not give them time to correct the effects or have them time yeah. to give them the proper effects because they keep going up to the last minute to change things. They need to have the story set, stick with the story and let them do their damn job and not crunch the hell out of them by making changes. And then like, well, the effects look bad. Well, they probably looked fine until they changed at the last minute again. That's well, that's TED just talk. it. Huh? That's my TED talk. Okay, there you go. So, I mean, that's the thing. Like, you know, every time they change the script, they're like, oh, hey, can we do this and say, can we have a big battle at the end of the movie now? And say, because I mean, we need more action. This stuff okay. does not. You can't just go like, well, done. Well, this is like comic book writers versus comic book artists. And no offense because you write comics. Oh, I know. I, I've been married to you long enough. And I, plus I was an artist before, you know, I wrote comics with you. So. Well, that's like, you know, you get these comic book writers who are like, oh, poor me. I can only write six comic books a month. And then you've got the artists that are like, God, I can barely keep up with the one uh -huh. book a month that you're throwing out because you're like, okay, uh, so for three pages, just do this huge space battle with like every alien ever in the Marvel universe and a bunch of spaceships and stuff and make it really dynamic, whatever. Okay, uh, and go. And now I'm going to walk away and I'm going to go write two or three and other then, books. And, then what, and like a week later, are you done yet? Are you done yet? Are you done yet? And that's what this is like. These, they, these, <laughs> are you done yet? They've talked to different people who worked in the VFX teams and they've repeatedly said the same thing. What happens is, they want to make changes at the last minute and they don't give them enough time to fix the effects. Yeah. Um, so this just seems like the perfect storm of, you know, I mean, this, this could be a very bad situation. For but that was, but I mean, I don't see how people didn't see this coming. Everybody saw this. Plus, I want to point out, too, again, they're pushing it back into that time frame that they're pushing it into. Um, it also does something else besides, you know, it's gotten it's going to be between Dune and some other, and like I think the the new Hunger Games, some other stuff that would be they could say, oh, you know, box office yeah. oversaturation. Or the this also puts it into a new quarter because this brings it to the Q one of twenty twenty four. So you're not gonna have two giant big effing losses in one year. Yeah, people don't realize. A lot of people don't realize that Disney's fiscal year actually ends at the end of uh, September. Mm -hmm. Fiscal year begins in October. So. Yeah, they can actually space out. The, so if they have two Marvel movies back to back that massively underperform. One's you know, going to be for 2023. One's going to be for 2024. Right. And this. this they have Guardians in the middle, which is probably going to offset it. That's probably what they're thinking, too. They're like, oh, we'll put it on the other side of Guardians. Because actually, this one was supposed to come out before Ant-Man, as I understand it. Yes, it was. And um, I don't know if that affects the story or how, how any of that's going to go. But like. Yeah, they can say, oh, look, you know, Ant-Man was a one-off because, you know, Ant-Man was never that big anyway. But, hey, Guardians did really, really well and brand synergy ride Guardians, James Gunn. And then they're going to be like, yeah, James Gunn's jumping ship and going to D.C. anyway. Well, everybody so. knows that already. Yeah. So. But it's, they have a, a breather with, well, less hit bombs, too, which is possible. With guard, depends how 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 far they push it with guardians, but yeah, it's gonna also put guardians if guardians does well in the same core or the same fiscal year as mm -hmm. Ant Man, but it's gonna separate out the Marvels into a completely different fiscal year, um, so they won't be judged the same time. Yeah, so Grace Randolph said this is like the second or third time the movie's been pushed back because the test scores were not good. Mm, I um, believe it. I've heard that that it did not do well. And then, and remember, when they, they keep saying that when people said, well, they, they screened it, didn't do it. No, -uh, that's not true. We heard it with Indiana Jones. Yes. Yet yes. the person who supposedly saw it knew all the stuff in the trailer before the yep. trailer was posted. Yep. Um, we've heard it with different things like the Marvels, you know, and oh, no, 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 no. 
Uh, so this is, again, Grace Randolph saying that um, it was pushed from summer to winter due to poor audience test scores, so Marvel wants to do yet another round. Another. This is so the second. pushing it again from winter to through summer yeah. back to fall again. Well, eventually this movie will eventually come out. Um, it's going to do another round of reshoots to so avoid another round of this kind of a mess. I mean, everyone loves Paul Rudd and Jonathan Majors, Michelle Pfeiffer, but they said they're worried that Brie Larson and Amon, Val- is it Ma- Amon Valani could be in a Star Wars level bloodbath of toxicity. Oh, for fuck's sake! That that I don't. I mean, look, they're uh, Isn't they're already starting. They're blaming it. They're preemptively going to blame the failure on uh, racism and and toxic masculinity yeah. and, and sexism and all that. And the thing is, no one's even seen anything of really of this that much to even make an opinion. Like. That's their go-to. They, they set this stuff up so they ha- always have an excuse. Yeah. Maybe it's just because the movie sucked. That's just it. Maybe the movie's just not good. So uh, she said, so while Disney Marvel refuses to admit defeat publicly over Ant-Man 3, mm-hmm. uh, it's totally understandable. You never let them see you sweat. I think Everybody that, knows they're freaking out. They are. They are. I, uh, all these media outlets are, Disney's freaking out about Ant-Man. Everybody's saying it. Now, how come they're freaking out over Ant-Man, but they weren't freaking out over the Eternals? How come? Because they were freaking out the Eternals, as we pointed out multiple times, before the Eternals even came out. They kept taking they kept taking all the budget and all the, the stuff from from Shang Chi and putting it on the Eternals. Like they didn't hardly advertise that one because they, but they were like throwing everything at the Eternals, everything, and it still tested and well, not tested, it still showed and did shit. You know, what's so weird about it is, I mean, all the drama about uh, Shang-Chi and actually so far has wound up being the best thing out of Phase 4. <laughs> yeah, you know, well, I, mean, like, I just thought it was funny. People were like, well, Clownfish, they said that they were, that it's going to fail. Ha ha. No, we were reading the box office predictions. We said repeatedly, if it does fail, part of the reason was because Disney was taking away stuff from it to promote Eternals. Because they were, they, were, they were really worried about that one. And they made it very obvious. This is the same thing. Yeah. God, it's not hard. So they said it's got to be a sign of considering the huge scheduling changes that have been made so abruptly. Uh, she said they should fire Duh. the writer the writer uh, off of it. Uh, the claims about the Marvel's testing poor with audiences are backed up by a giant freaking robot who actually first reported on the poor test screen. Right, several months ago. Seven we talked months about. ago. Yeah. Remember how giant freaking robot, one of their writers, kept calling out our writers on Pirates and Princesses mm-hmm. for making up stuff and rumors and stuff? Mm-hmm. And they're they're the ones always running with these rumors. I know. I always but it's gospel, funny. they say. But no, I mean, I, I do believe it. There, there's no other reason to move a movie multiple times. No, if it had been one time or two times, you can, okay, well, they got to push it back to the effects because of COVID or whatever. But they are continually moving this, and they're shifting it around other films. Like... They gave this one the spot for the Haunted Mansion and then moved the Haunted Mansion to its spot that was what you're supposed to have in July, which I guess makes sense because you'd want the Haunted Mansion up before Halloween. But, you know, and I, but you know what I mean? They're just shifting yeah. it around and they keep doing it. This is the fourth, the fifth date they've gotten, the fourth shift it's had. So I'm just like, clearly there are problems. It doesn't take anybody with you know, insider information or a rocket scientist to figure out that, that there is a lot of fucking problems with this film. There are a lot of problems with the MCU in general, and now the media is actually finally starting to catch on. So they're going to still demonize YouTubers as yes, being probably. Nazis because... It's also not an exclusive if you say, hey, I'm hearing that there's issues with the movie because I keep right. pushing it back. I mean, just even the the uh, VFX artists would be like, hey, you know what? We had to go redo this scene like three times because they keep changing the script. Mm-hmm. But not realizing, like, look, we have a full on like scroll war going on here. And every time you change the script, we got to mm-hmm. re-render all that shit. Yeah, but know? they don't understand that. And they said that's part of the problem. They have a bunch of people make it, calling the shots don't actually have experience doing the work to understand that you can't just snap your fingers, you know, can't Thanos this shit. I I worked you can in. You the audience though. You can. I, they are. They are. They literally have the audience at this point. Um, I worked in marketing for years, and yeah, you. Had, I had bosses sometimes if they they worked their way up, they understood how much time was actually involved in doing stuff. Like, hey, that one little change. Could you just like you know change this little thing? Could you just like redesign that logo and then just like slap it on all the stuff that's already been printed somehow magically? It's mm-hmm. like no, that's not. That's really not how it works. Right. But okay. I'll, I'll try. I'll try to do that. Yeah, we'll just do that. Um, but yeah, you get some people that are just meatheads. And and I think it's just they're – look, this is the thing. Disney is having the whip cracked on them. Am I allowed to say that now? Like a horse. Like a horse. Uh, there you go. Like a horse. Like a horse and buggy with a whip. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And, and they're – 
investors, shareholders are like more, 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 more. It's a white horse too, just to make sure it is you white understand. Horse, yes. Just oh. to make sure everybody, so we're all clear. We're all clear on that. Um, and uh, they have to keep producing. So it's they, also a male horse. There you go. He deserved it. Uh, so anyway, <laughs> so anyway, um, yeah. So they are expecting every Marvel thing to be bigger than the last Marvel thing, and now we're we're scraping the bottom of the barrel with characters that people don't care about. And I'm sorry, um, all these characters, the Ms. Marvel and the Ironheart and all these characters, they were the ones that were ushered in at the same time that the comic books bottomed out when they decided they were going to replace all the Avengers. I mean, I'm just going to cut to the chase. They decided to make replacements for agenda's sake and not yes. for actual audience sake. They wanted to signal strongly to everyone characters did not take because they didn't give the characters a fair chance anyway because they didn't let them be themselves. They were just a stand-in for something else because of, you know, mostly misogyny, toxic men, et cetera, et cetera. And that's where they're at. And then the characters did not take there. The audience is also like the characters because a lot of times, not every character, but a lot of times they're kind of just like, you know, they're made to be a fill-in, so they didn't really get the development that a lot of their characters I think, have gotten over the year, decades of time. Yeah, so here's the thing. They keep they keep trying to get Ms. Marvel to stick, right? They they try, they basically it's not the actress's fault. She's no, a sweetie. Don't, she don't actually, harass her. She actually seems like a really good kid. I'm gonna be honest. She seems like a good kid. The kid that plays America Chavez seems like she's pretty solid. Like I don't have a problem with the actresses playing these characters, right? But Ms. Marvel, the character, they have been trying to get her to be the literally the face of Marvel, the new Spider-Man. They've been trying to get Pretty her. Much. They've been trying to get her to be the new Spider-Man for years. And they keep trying. They reboot her comic like umpteen times. They make her the main character in the Square video game that that failed so catastrophically. They wound up selling off that division, uh, and they basically said that they want her to be the headliner in this movie. Like this movie's basically about her, and that's she's, why she's down below. Like, yeah, yeah, she's gonna be. She's gonna be the. The reason the Marvel Marvel Universe is called the Marvel Universe because Ms. Marvel. It's all about the Marvel. Well, Marvels. now I can't look at the poster the same way ever since you told me what that one person said. Oh, God. Uh, yeah. That well, looks like female anatomy. And I'm like, oh, my God. Yeah, no, I, I can't it. show that on. Yeah, if you look at the – if you if you Google it, it looks – yes. Anyway. Um, <laughs> but, yeah, they're trying to make it stick. And the thing is is that her show did not perform that well. Now, I've actually had some people tell me – that the show was not terrible. They actually said of the Disney Plus shows, it actually wasn't that bad. But people I, just in general weren't interested. They weren't interested. They're like, who gives a crap? I don't know this character. And her whatever. personality is she's a Captain Marvel stan. Yeah. And honestly, I'm going to tell you, that probably turned more people off than anything. Yeah. So I think, I mean, at this point, um, I have to agree. I think that they're, they need to massively course correct Marvel. And I don't see that happening. I mean, all the rumors about what they're going to do with Fantastic Four and the X-Men point to more of the same idiotic crap that hasn't worked. And, I mean, you've got a golden opportunity, right? You've, as long as you have Spider-Man, the X-Men, and the Fantastic Four and you get them right, you can keep it. See, <laughs> so you got the, that little caveat is the problem. Asterix. And you, you get that right. That's the problem. Marvel can get by with Spike because this is a 90s kid, right? I, I can tell you as somebody who read the comics in the 90s, these were the biggest franchises. That's why they got divided up for movie properties. Spider-Man, X-Men, and Fantastic Four. If you get them right, you can keep the MCU afloat because the Avengers were like B-list, C-list characters back then. You just have to get those those three right. Now, but they're not gonna. Sony's it's doing Disney. Yeah, it's Disney. Sony's doing sorta of, kinda quasi okay with Spider Man, but I don't have a lot of hope long term. Fantastic Four and X Men, I think, are, are dead on arrival. I, everything oh, I've heard. They will make sure of it. They're not gonna. They will, they yeah. will, it's like they go out of their way to pick people who, who are going to ruin things. Yeah, I it's, think. It's not that hard. It's not hard. It's, it's really not hard to get the Fantastic Four and the X Men right. You've got decades of quality source material. You just have to read the comics. Yeah, but the problem is they want <laughs> to insert the modern whatever sensibilities, which just means agenda. And when they start doing that, which you know, by the way, X-Men, lots of agenda in there, just saying. But it was done in a way that was like, you know, organic and, you know, was good. And characters were still good. And, you know, that wasn't the main point. Now it's just organic. Orgasmic, not organic. Well, no, so it's not even. Orgies and it's just, galas it's, yeah, pretty much. But I'm just saying, it's like up. it's like you can do, you can you can have your cake and eat it too. 
But the problem is, it's not enough for you. You want to shove that cake in people's faces. You want to rub that cake all over their face. And then you wonder why they don't come back for more cake. And I'm just like, that's pretty much what's going on. Yeah, whereas in the marbles, they might be rubbing that pie all over people's face to get them to come back for more. But they're not gonna, because, no. you know, they didn't want, they wanted to taste the pie. They didn't want the pie shoved in their face. They wanted to they wanted a reason to come back for more pie. Like Sam's Club. Right. Like a little cup of pie. They give you that little thimble full of pie. Yeah, I think, okay, okay. I think we're talking about two different things and we're just gonna stop. I'm talking about actual pie. Now uh -huh. I want pie. We're gonna, we're gonna wrap yes, this up. Yes, because you just have to take it down that road every time. I'm literally talking about pie. Mm -hmm. All right. Talk to you later. Bye.